yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And He will lift you up. And He will lift you up. Jesus is the Son of God. Good morning and welcome this morning. Beautiful day today, and it's always great to be together uh, here in the Fellowship Hall or uh, in, in the auditorium, or if you're joining us in the parking lot, or we'll be watching, or you're watching live, or you're live streaming. Phew, you know, that's a lot of possibilities there, but we're just honored to have everybody here. If you're visiting, and we have some visitors and some recurring visitors here this morning, and uh, we would, we, you're our honored guests. We want you to feel welcome. And if you're looking for a church home, I don't think you'll feel you'll, you'll find a more welcoming, warm place than Signal Mountain. Uh, I think also we we will certainly use your talents here, uh, and, and I think the church will will really look look to that for you. Uh, one one announcement is that I think everyone's interested in the good works that are going out from this congregation and. This week we sent some money to uh, members of the church in, in El Salvador who are homeless and to build a small shelter for a couple of ladies there. Uh, just an example of the many things that are happening uh, in, in, in Signal Mountain area but also in the world that, that, uh, that we're reaching out to others. Don't forget there's a time change. We spring forward. Uh, next week, so don't forget that. That will be, I think, on, on Sunday night, Sunday morning, Saturday night, so make sure your clocks are set for that. There are a number of people in the congregation who have lost loved ones or ha are sick, and we want to continue to remember them in our prayers, and there's a more extensive list in the bulletin, so please, in your, in your daily prayers, remember, remember all those listed. But specifically, I uh, want to remember Lucas Jones and his family uh, in the passing of his father, and also the sympathy of the congregations extended to uh, Jean's, Jean Carroll's daughter-in-law, Wendy, uh, in the loss of her mother. As for sick, uh, it's, we're glad to hear that Hank uh, Kofer has done well in surgery, and I asked uh, th this morning uh, if, uh, asked Shay if he was getting plenty of ice cream and was assured he was. So glad to, glad to see that. Uh, Marguerite Bennett uh, is, is still in Alexian Healthcare. No visitors, but please remember she loves cards. Uh, Clark Cooper's surgery went well. We're, we're thankful for that. And we just want to keep Clark and his family uh, in, in our prayers. You should have received an email this week. I hope you did. 
uh, from the congregation about reopening Sunday morning classes. And if you haven't responded, it's a very simple survey, particularly if you're parents of, of an infant through 12th grade or grade children, uh, please respond as this will allow us to plan for our classes and also particularly for our teachers. So we ask you to respond soon today if possible, but certainly uh, no later than next Sunday, March 14th. Also, please remember that the elders, as, as always, uh, will be here at the building at 3 o'clock. And if you have need of prayers or concerns or other things, anything to discuss, uh, we, we plan to be here. Are there any other announcements? And I apologize for that lengthy list. If not, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our blessed Father in heaven, we bow before you, the only God. You're the God that made us, and you're the God that keeps us, and we praise and glorify your name. Uh, we know there is no other God. We thank you, Father, for this very precious gift this morning of letting us assemble together in your name and presence. We pray that you will be pleased this morning as we meet, and we give you praise and adoration as we celebrate the memorial to your Son. And we pray, Father, that your Spirit will guide us and move us to love and serve you even more intensely. Continue to bless this congregation, Father. We pray you will guide us and use us to effectively carry out your mission in this dark world. It seems that evil seems to increase all around us. We pray, Father, that you will make us vessels to spread the only true and everlasting vaccine that can heal this broken world. We come to you, Father, as, as broken people. We ask for your continuing forgiveness of our sins, and we're thankful for your grace through the blood of Christ that covers us. Please keep us, Father, from the evil one. Be with those who've been mentioned that is sick this morning. We pray for Hank and Clark and Marguerite and many others for their healing and freedom from pain and restoration. We pray also, Father, for comfort and peace to Lucas and Wendy in their loss. We pray for all those who struggle, and we pray for strength, Father, and hope. We pray, Father, you'll make us strong in your grace and your spirit as we worship together now. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy to God, leaning on the everlasting. Yeah.
am the sheep and the Lord is my shepherd. Watching over my soul, my soul to keep guarding over me ever, watching wherever I go. And when the wind supper. week we have opportunity uh, to give back we've got actually opportunities every day right but uh, we set this time aside to to give back of our of our means and uh, before we we say a prayer just wanted to read from 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 starting in verse 6 but this I say he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. 
So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, while you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgiving to God. While through the proof of this ministry they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men, and by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for this day, for the opportunity to gather together as your people. Father, we have truly been blessed. Uh, both spiritually and uh, with, with many gifts. Uh, Father, help us to use those gifts to honor your kingdom. Help us to do so uh, out of just pure desire to, to help to further your kingdom, Father. We know that all these gifts, all these blessings come from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, before the Lord's Supper, if you'll turn with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an un unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the, with the world. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful that Jesus was willing and able to come to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. As we take this bread, help us to think of that sacrifice and to reflect on it, not just today, but every day. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray again. Father, we thank you again for Jesus' sacrifice for the blood that he shed that covers over our sins. Father, help us to accept that sacrifice. Um, we know that uh, it was necessary for us to be able to come to you. Father, we are so grateful for that. Help us to never take it for granted. In Jesus' name, amen.
the song before the reading and the prayer will be step by step. Oh God, you are my God, and I church. If you would turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 7. This morning's reading is going to be the whole chapter. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you, and when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them, nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods, so that the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. But thus you shall deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. And he repays those who hate him to their face, to destroy them. <clears throat> he will not be slack with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. Therefore you shall keep the commandment, the statutes, and the judgments which I command you today to observe them. Then it shall come to pass, because you listen to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore to your fathers. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock in the land of which he swore to your fathers to give you. You shall be blessed above all peoples. There shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your livestock. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but will lay them on all those who hate you. Also, you shall destroy all the peoples whom the Lord your God delivers over to you. Your eyes shall have no pity on them nor shall you serve their gods, for that will be a snare to you. If you should say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. 
the great trials which your eyes saw, the signs and the wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So shall the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornet among them until those who are left who hide themselves from you are destroyed. You shall not be terrified of them. For the Lord your God, the great and awesome God, is among you. And the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you, little by little. You will be unable to destroy them at once, lest the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you, and will inflict defeat upon them until they are destroyed. And he will deliver their kings into your hand, and you will destroy their name from under heaven. No one shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. You shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is in them, or on them, excuse me, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. As I read this passage, uh, I'm just reminded of God's grace and His promises to us. There are promises for greatness and for goodness to God's people. And there is a curse to those that hate God. And I'm just so thankful that through Jesus we have the ability to cling to those promises and the faithfulness and the goodness and the mercy of God. Let's bow with me, please. Father, as we read your word this morning, we're just so thankful for the promises that you have promised to your people. Lord, we just boldly cling to those promises, Father, and help us to always keep our eyes on that. And Lord, no matter what faces your people here on this earth, we know that there is a victory in Christ and a victory for your people. Lord, we're just so thankful for that gift. Please be with us this morning. Help Greg to uh, deliver what he has prepared to us in a way that's uh, worthy and pleasing unto you and help us to receive that message in a way that's worthy and pleasing unto you, Father. And help us carry that with us always. Carry your word and your promises with us always. Father, forgive us of our sins and forgive us of our many missteps. But help us to be your people and to do your will. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Signal Mountain. Thank you, Will. I love you, brother. Mm. Helen, you've done good. I almost want to say, let's just go home. That was really, really good. Um, Today, we're going to look at uh, our reading for this past week, some thoughts on that. Uh, we read chapters 1 through 18 of Deuteronomy this week, if you were on the schedule. And, uh, wow, we are moving along almost through the entire Pentateuch. Uh, those books that Jesus referred to as the books of Moses. And Moses was just days away from dying as he gave these words. Israel is encamped on the plains of Moab. Uh little map here just east of the Canaan uh, where they're going to enter the Jordan rivers between them and the Canaan promised land it's the end of the journey for Moses and God has made that very clear to him and in the first few chapters you see how he said it was your fault that I can't go in uh, Moses wanted so bad to be with the people as they entered this promised land God had better things in store for Moses and he appears with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. But um, Moses' final message to Israel is a reminder. It is a prophetic look into Israel's future as well as a look back on their past. And Moses pours out his heart in these words. And it touches our hearts as we read it, if we listen. 
The Word of God, the heart of God, is echoed in Moses as the Holy Spirit inspires these words to Israel and to us. And we're going to hear from several passages in today's lesson. But first, uh, this little map of the journey is twofold. You can see the traditional trek of how they traveled about in the wilderness, but also um, know that very few places mentioned as names for where Israel camped have been discovered to any certainty. This is the desert. Uh, this is the place where nobody was. They named those places as they camped in them, probably. And as you can imagine, this is desert region. On this next map, this is a satellite photo. Uh, you see the green Nile Delta and all of the Goshen area? Well, Israel left the land of green and wandered in the land of brown for 40 plus years. And when someone has a chance uh, to see it like this, I think it's helpful. When you hear the last words of someone, their departing message, aren't those words usually given special attention? They should be, I think. Deuteronomy is the departing message of Moses to Israel. And we have been focusing on what the Bible says about God's grace and God's wrath as we've studied through the Old Testament thus far. And Deuteronomy does not disappoint in talking about those things. And today, we want to look at, look at it in this way. I want to ask the question, well, where did it go? Back to my, there you go. What does God love and what does God hate? I hope I hadn't messed this thing up. Bummer. Maybe it's next. We're going to look at quickly a, a scan of Deuteronomy. Uh, all the laws of God recorded in Moses show us what God loves and God hates. In Deuteronomy 1 through 18, there's four sections. The first section, 1 through 4, is a historical prologue to the law, which is in chapter 5. The repeating of the Ten Commandments is given in chapter 5 and also the setting. Moses keeps it historical there for the first section and over and over returns to the history of Israel as he talks to them about God's laws. In chapter 6 through 11, we see uh, there's admonitions, encouragements, warnings to remain faithful and to pass the faith on to the generations that follow. Real important part there. And then in 12 through 19, there's a variety of instructions on worship, on um, canceling debts, period of canceling debts, on feasts and leadership. He'll talk about judges that were set up, kings that will be coming, chapter 13, and also a prophet will arise among you, like myself. We know that's pointing to Jesus ultimately, but also prophets of God would come and speak for God's, speak God's word to God's people. And then there were cities of refuge that were set up and what that's all about. You read that this week, I hope. Um, how many of you here are list makers? Raise your hand. We've got a bunch of hands. Last week in our small group, seniors mentioned being a, a list maker. I am like that somewhat myself, but some are more better. Some are more better. Some are better at it than others. If you like lists, uh, one reason I do is when I was growing up, if I ever came to talk to my mother, she would without fail assign me something to do. And so I discovered there was no end in her ability to give me another job. So finally, I asked mom, would you please just make a list of what you want me to do this week and put it on Monday on the refrigerator, and I will check them off when I get them done. And she agreed with that. That was our pact. And then when I checked the last one off, I was free. It worked for both of us. In fact, because I could see the end of the tunnel, and mom could see what I'd done. And check it out. Well, today I want to give you a list out of Deuteronomy. Uh, if you're a list maker, wow, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay. If you're a list maker, we're going to look at a list of things that show us what God loves and what God hates. And uh, I'm going to read text, lots of scripture about this. God's word is better than anything I could say. So we're going to listen to his own words through this. And I hope this will be something that draws us closer to the heart of God and awareness of him, helping us not only to understand the Lord, but also make it a pursuit to be more like him in the process. Love what God loves and hate what God hates. Number one, God loves his people. He said so in this, in verse 8 of chapter 7, it was because the Lord loved you. 
In chapter 10, verses 12 through 21, let me read this. Now Israel, and now Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? If you want to turn there, Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 21. What does the Lord ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commandments and decrees that I'm giving you today for your own good. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Yet the Lord, listen to this, set his affection on you, your forefathers, and loved them. And he chose you, the, his, their descendants, above all the nations as it is today. So circumcise your hearts, therefore. Do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome. He shows no partiality, accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and he loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. You are to love those who are foreigners. For the Lord your God brought you. You were foreigners in Egypt. Lord your God brought you out of there. Fear the Lord your God and serve Him. Hold fast to Him. Make your oaths in His name. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. God loves His people, does He not? And God expects reverence from His people too. Number two, God hates rebellion, disobedience, and complaining. He hates it. Look at chapter 9, verses 5 through 7. Just flip around with your Bible, if you will, with me. Chapter 9, verse 5 through 7. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you're going to take the possession of their land. These people you're going to go in and dispossess. It's on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord your God is going to drive them out before you to accomplish what he swore to your fathers, forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand then, it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is giving you this good land to possess, for you are a what? You're a stubborn people. You're a stiff-necked people. Remember this and never forget how you aroused the anger of the Lord your God in the wilderness from the day you left Egypt till now you've been rebellious against the Lord. You guys, you got to get over this, he's saying. Chapter 9, verse 22 through 24. You made the Lord angry at Tabara, at Masa, at Kibroth Hatava. And when the Lord sent you out uh, from Kadesh Barnea, he said, go up and take possession of the land I've given you. But what did you do? You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You didn't trust him or obey him. You've been rebellious since the Lord, against the Lord ever since I've known you, says Moses. Moses is getting a little hot here. Why can't you guys get it, he's saying. God hates rebellion. He hates disobedience. He hates complaining. Number three, the Lord loves his people to be loyal. He loves for his people to be loyal to him and know that he is the one and only God. Deuteronomy 4, 32 through 40. Deuteronomy 4, 32 through 40. Ask now the former days, long before your time. From the day God created human beings on earth, ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great ever happened as has happened like this? Has it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take from himself a nation from another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds like the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? Anybody ever seen that? You, you were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Listen, besides him, there is no other. From the heavens, he made you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth, he showed you his great fire. You heard his words out from the fire. Because he loved your forefathers and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you and to bring you into their land and to give it to you for an inheritance as it is today. Here we are about to go there, he's saying. Acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven above and on earth below. There is no other. Keep his decrees and commandments which I'm giving you today so that it may go well with you and your children after you and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. God loves for his people to be loyal to him and know that he is the one and only true God. And that being so, 
God hates idolatry. He hates idol worship, and he hates for his people to misuse his name. Listen to the Ten Commandments, verses 7 through 11 of chapter 5. Deuteronomy 5, 7 through 11. You shall have how many gods? No other gods besides me or before me. God says, I'm the only one and no other ones. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations for those who love me and keep my commandments." You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Pretty clear, huh? God also loves, he loves for his people to rest and spend time with him. Chapter 5, verse 12 through 15, Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord your God. It's a rest with you and God. On it you shall do no work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servants, nor your ox or donkey or any of your animals, or any foreigner residing in your towns, so that the male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day, not only the Sabbath day once a week, but also in chapter 16, verses 16 through 17. And that whole chapter gives all these lists of feast days. Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God in the place he will choose, at the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the Festival of Weeks, and the Festival of the Tabernacles. By the way, these are not just one-day events, okay? You go and you spend a week, three times a year, camping out or being with God's people and being before the Lord. God wants three vacation weeks with you every year, and he wants every week, at least one day. And he wants you to rejoice in it and relax. He loves that. God loves it when children honor their parents. Deuteronomy 5, 16. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you so it may go well with you and you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess. If someone has a stubborn... This is chapter 21, verse 18 through 21. Listen how God really cares about this thing. He loves it, but he also has a hate in it. If someone has a stubborn, rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother, will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him, bring him to the elders of the gate of the town, and they shall say to the elders, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He's a glutton and a drunkard, and all the men of that town shall stone him to death. You must purge the evil from among you, and all Israel will hear it and be afraid. Okay, I'm tempted to preach here. Let's read on. God hates murder, adultery, stealing, lying, coveting. Deuteronomy 5, 17 through 21. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his male or female servants, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. God hates these things. He hates them. But God loves for his people to revere him in holy fear. He loves it when we go, whoa, before him. Listen to, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Listen to Deuteronomy 5, 23 through 29. They had just heard God's voice speaking these Ten Commandments, and Israel was terrified. Verse 23, when you heard the voice out of the darkness while the mountain was ablaze with fire and all the leaders of your tribes and your elders were there, they came to me and you said, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty. We've heard the voice out of the fire. Today we've seen that a person can live even if God speaks with them. But now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer, we will die. 
For what mortal has ever heard the voice of the living God speak out of fire as we haven't survived? Moses, you go near, you listen to all the Lord says, and then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen. We will obey. Verse 28, this is beautiful. When the Lord heard you, when you spoke this, the Lord said to me, I have heard what this people has said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would always be inclined to fear me and keep my commandments so that they, it might go well with them and their children forever. God loves it when we revere him in holy fear. God loves for parents to do all they can to impress his word and will on their children's hearts. He loves it, guys. And he hates it if we don't do it. Just so you know. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them where? On your what? On your children. Impress them on your children, talking about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your homes and on your gates so that your days... Oops, I'm in chapter 18, sorry, 11. Impress them, talk about them, they're the same thing. Uh, verse 8, tie them as symbols on your hands, bind them on your foreheads, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now listen to chapter 11, verses 18 through 21. Chapter 11, 18. It was so similar, I skipped it right down to it. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children. Talking about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your forefathers, as many as, as the days that the heavens are above the earth. God is saying, impress this on your kids. How so? Take them to church at least three times a week, right? Make sure they go to Bible class at least three times a week. That's it, right? You do that and it's guaranteed they're going to be good, right? How's that working for us? How much are we talking? I'm, I'm preaching. Okay, I quit. We got to do it all the time. Amen. Thank you. Number 10. I'm almost done. God hates, he hates when his people forget it. Deuteronomy 8, 10 through 20. Turn there. He's talking about now, when you get in that land and you're in houses you didn't build and you got all this other stuff going on for you and cisterns you didn't dig and trees you didn't plant and you're eating from, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he's given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Forgetting doesn't mean I don't have any clue. Forgetting means I've set him aside in my mind for something else. Okay? We think God forgives, he forgets. Well, he does, but he can also call it back to memory. We find that in the parable, well, I've preaching too much. Okay, back. So hard. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, when you and your herds and your flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud. And you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through that vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty, waterless land with his venomous snakes and scorpions. Woo. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your forefathers had never known, to humble you, to test you, so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, 
my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today, you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Why is our nation going through this terrible crisis now? Why? It's because a nation has forgotten our God. In God we what? And who said it at the Congress? I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. God has nothing to do with this Congress. The will of God. That was stated in our nation's capital. God forbid. You don't think that's light? That's huge. That's huge. It is so critical. It's critical that we as a people believe and know and serve God. This is not an option. And as our nation goes away, what do you think the gravity and the pull will be for our kids? As our education systems crumble into not knowing between boys and girls, what do you think that's going to do for our children? What do you think? You think it's not going to affect them? Hello. Good morning. Get woke. Sorry, I'm way off key here. Ah. God hates it when we worship other gods. He hates it. Deuteronomy 13. I'm not even going to read it. Yes, I am. Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13. This is a harsh chapter. If a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you miraculous signs or wonder, and if the sign or wonder which he has spoken takes place, it is a miracle, okay? And he says, let's follow other gods. Gods you've not known. Let's worship them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you will love Him with all your heart and with all your soul. It is the Lord your God that you must follow and you must revere. Keep His commands. Obey Him. Serve Him. Hold fast to Him. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death because he preached rebellion against the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. He has tried to turn you from the way of the Lord your God who commanded you to follow. You must purge the evil from among you. If your very own brother, if your son or daughter, or the wife you love, or your closest friend secretly entices you saying, let's go worship other gods. Gods neither you nor your forefathers have known. Gods of the peoples around you, whether far or near, from one end of the land to the other. Do not yield to him or listen to him. Show no pity hard words. Do not spare him or shield him. You must certainly put him to death, and your hand must be the first in putting him to death, and then the hands of all the people. Stone him to death because he tried to turn you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Then all Israel will hear and be afraid, and no one among you will do such an evil thing. If you hear it said of one of your towns, the Lord your God is giving you to live in that wicked men have arisen among you and they've led the people of their town astray saying, let's go worship other gods, gods we've not known. Then you must inquire, probe, and investigate it thoroughly. And if it is true and it's been proved that this detestable thing has happened among you, then you must certainly put the, to the sword all who live in that town. Destroy it completely, both its people and its livestock. Gather its plunder from the town in the middle of the public square and completely burn that town and all its plunder as a whole burnt offering to the Lord God. And it's to remain a ruin forever, never to be rebuilt. Those are tough words. Where do they come from? I tell you, this book, this word is going to be censored soon. It speaks such words that are so contrary to where we're going and where we're headed. You wait. If they can cancel Dr. Zeus, they can cancel God's word too or try to.
God hates it when his people go after other gods. And God hates it when we try to worship him the way idol worshipers worship their gods. He hates it. You can read it for yourself. It's chapter 12, 29 through 32. 31 says, you must not worship the Lord your God in their way. Because in worshiping their gods, they do all kinds of detestable things the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifice to their gods. They sacrifice their kids to these gods. See that you do what I command you. Okay, question. Question. This is Deuteronomy. Old Testament. Has God's will changed on these things? I'm not saying the church ought to round up towns that are going against God and destroy them. I'm not saying that at all. But has God's will about that changed? What do you want to do with that one, huh? Take them to the cross. Take them to the... Thank you, Kendall. Thank you, Kendall. Take them to the cross. That's the only hope anybody has. That's our hope too, isn't it? God makes it clear and Jesus repeats it. God's greatest commandment, His greatest desire is that we will love Him and ultimately be transformed to be like Him so we can spend eternity with Him. That is the ultimate goal of God. And the only way that could be done was a sacrifice made by Himself for us, rebellious, sinful enemies and so instead of going in and destroying cities, we need to go and preach the gospel to them, don't we? And you know what? When we go in and we preach the gospel to people who don't like it, what are they going to do to us? Some will listen. Some will come. Others won't. Some will persecute you. Some will call you names and mock you. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to shut up and hide? Or are you going to speak out the word of God? There's a heaven and there's a hell. Okay? There's a heaven and there's a hell. Who does God want in heaven? Everybody. Everybody. God's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. God wants us to come to Him. But if we will not, if we choose not, God will give us what we choose. And that is hell. It's totally separated from Him. It is in total cursed corruption and destruction. Last thought. What do you love most? What do you hate most? I would like you list takers to try this. Go home and make a list. Here's my love list. Here's my hate list. Go ahead and make a list. And then go to God's Word and compare it to His list. And see if God can help you to line up your loves and your hates with His loves and His hates. If you need help and you need prayer or you need to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ to be baptized to be cleansed of sin washed clean so you can escape the corruption of hell if you want freedom from sin God's calling you to himself and believing in Jesus Christ turning away from that which destroys you, confessing with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and being buried with Him in the waters of baptism and raised to walk in newness of life is the answer to getting you into the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Christ to start you off and then walk with them. And we'll walk with you. If you need that or anything else, why don't you cut, just raise your hand. One of the elders will assist you while we sing this song of encouragement. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, and let's go home. Oh, oh, oh. Get right, church, I say, get right, church. Get right, church, and let's go home. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home on the morning train.
Thank you, Greg, for the lesson this morning. Beautiful day, inside and outside. Spring is here, and it's great to see all the flowers and things that will start blooming here soon. So, bringing back to life, and, and hopefully churches around the country will come back to life as well. Don't forget, next Sunday, what do we have to do? Spring forward, set those clocks, or you will miss service. We don't want that to happen. I need to read a note here. I want to thank all my church family for all the phone calls, the cards, the food, and all the prayers for me while my hand healed. This is one loving church family, and I want to thank everyone. Amen. Gene Carroll. Gene, I'm glad your hand is doing better as well. And thank you for being here and being such a great part of this congregation. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day. You've certainly blessed us all. and Help us always to remember uh, that all these things have come from your hand and help us to always be grateful and to say thank you. Got a lot going on in this world, but we know that Jesus is the answer and the only answer. And help us as we go about our daily routines that we talk boldly and, uh, of you and your son so that we can make a difference in other people's lives. I pray that you will be with all of us this week as we go to school and our workplaces, that you will watch over and care for us, and again, that we might be the examples that we need to be for you. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. We are dismissed. <laughs>